Okay, good. All right, so good evening, everyone. Glad to see everybody. It is six o'clock. We're about to get started. Um, Earl has joined us. He has some good news for us. I passed my math test. Oh, uh-uh. I know it's time for me to pass mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Yes, no. Absolutely. And and you know what stuck out to me the most is hearing Mr. Tinsley in my ear. He keeps saying, ask what the, answer what they're trying to the question is asking you. Only solve that. And I kept thinking about what he's saying. What is they asking me? What are they asking me? And that's when I'm like, okay, let me see if I get this right. And that they giving you, what are they asking you? That's right. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Earl, you I going out? We you. can't hear you. Oh, you okay. you went out. Okay, let's see if we go ahead. What 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 I had a problem with was those um was the graph. And I asked you the last last time we was in class, how do I graph that with the 03, 21? They mm. gave me like four four graphs for functions. And guess mm. what? It was all undefined. Okay. Undefined. Um, yeah. Not all, not, yeah. All right. And it yeah. had it had like uh all was parallel. You had two dots right behind it, each other. I don't know why mm. they kept giving me that. I'm like, it's well, the same well, 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 this, this is what you gotta remember. And this is what I was trying to tell you. They're going to give you like seven to 10 linear equations and you have to be ready. So they're going to ask you for the graph. They're going to ask you for the slope. Um, they're going to ask you the, 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 the equation of the line. They're going to ask you the equation of the parallel line. They're going to ask you the equation of the perpendicular line. So you have to be in that, in linear equations, if you, if you just look at the numbers, seven to 10 problems, well, 10 out of 40, right, is like mm -hmm. one quarter or 25% of your exam. So we're glad that you passed. Like we, 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 you know, we're very happy for you. So that was good news. Um, Absolutely. Um, Congratulations. So another, per <coughs> another, another person, probably she, she's not here tonight. So, but let's go ahead and get started. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Um, Thank you. But, um, make sure you um, make sure you call me, because um, then Absolutely. we can get the uh, we can get because we what I want to do to you is tell. Let you know which what I want you to do next for the science because there's a lot of yep. math on the science. So let's grab that science next. Um, okay. It shouldn't too, it should take too much for you to grab your science. Maybe like maybe use your use your uh, your next one on one session with me. We'll use for the science. All right. It sounds good. All right. All right. So when, let's when, get started. Go ahead. When you're available. Well, we'll talk after class. Okay. Right. Right. So um so has anybody been working on anything that's Gave issues during this week. Anything they want to discuss? Yes, I do, Bridget. Okay. I can't find the paper, but last <laughs> night, I'm sorry. Last night I was um doing some math problems, and I came across I had two triangles, right? Mm -hmm. And one triangle had two legs. I had like numbers for two legs, and they had another one, which is the same. I didn't the um triangle, but it only had one number on it. Mm -hmm. Wow, really? Let me, yeah. Okay. Let me let uh, me try and find my paper. Okay, I got I I'll make I'll make some up. I know exactly what you're talking about. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. All right. So um okay, so um hmm, interesting, very interesting that that they um GD has those problems. So what she's talking about is Pythagorean theorem. And that's another area that I can guarantee you're going to have a question on Pythagorean theorem. So what she's saying is, um, you had a, say you have a triangle here, and I'm not drawing it to scale, right? Um, if I had a leg of three and four, does anybody know how I would solve this missing leg? Does anybody know how I would solve this missing leg, which is the hypotenuse? So if I have a right Maybe. triangle. Yes, I know yeah. I know how to do that. You do yeah. the third to the second, fourth to the second, you add them and you get the um you you get the answer and then you do um the root of that number, right? Okay, so so uh so so first of all the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is c squared. The side opposite the 90 degree is your hypotenuse which is side c you're 100% right. So you said 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. So 9 plus 16 equals c squared, 25 equals c squared, and then you take the square root of both sides, 
you get sequel five. You're 100 percent right. That was right. So he said, Oh, I know how to do that. But that's not what they gave you. What they gave you maybe is a problem like this. Uh-huh. Hold on. And they only gave you one side. Right? Is that the problem you're talking about? No, this is what they gave me. I have two triangles. Mm -hmm. They shape different. Mm -hmm. One was one side. Are they, are they right triangles? Yes, they were. Okay. One okay. side was 10 feet and the bottom base was eight feet. And then mm -hmm. another triangle, I had 60 inches. And the question was, two triangles are similar. Which expression oh. is equal to the side length? Okay, that's, okay. That's, oh, wow. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. So you don't need Pythagorean thing for that. I'm going to show you what you need. No, uh-uh. Yeah. You said one triangle, six, eight, right? One triangle is 10 feet, eight feet. Oh, eight and 10. Yeah. And the other one is- The legs or what? Which which was the um so eight and ten, and the other one was what? Sixty inches on one end, okay. on the on the base on the base of the other Perfect. one. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love yeah. it. Yeah. Listen, this is also an area where the GED loves um giving you problems. This is called you know, so they so um the the concept they use are the um the, these are similar triangles. Okay, so if they're similar. That means their sides are proportional, okay? So if they're proportional, if they're proportional, then you need to set up a proportion. So first of all, again, when we're doing proportions, just like I tell you in my ebook, just how I tell you on Schoology, is use the proportion that you know. So we look at this triangle and we know this is eight to 10, right? Right now, this is associated, this side is associated with this side. This side is associated with this unknown side. So we're going to match them up. So X over 60, right? And then we cross multiply. So 10 times X is equal to 480. Divide both sides by 10. Divide both sides by 10, the 10s cancel, we get X equal 48. So that missing side <coughs> is 48. And that's, so if they, if, they if they ask you about similar triangles, no, that's, that means those sides must be proportional. Now, hold on, Mr. Tinsley, that's not how my teacher showed me in class. Well, that's not how I was looking at this video. And I saw, well, I always go with the ratio that you know. You also could look at it this way, and I'm gonna show you that you get the same exact answer. We got 48 the first time. So, I'm, but I'm gonna show you again. You could also say, okay, 10 is to 60 as eight is to X. So 10 is to 60 as eight is to X. Again, you cross multiply, because it's one of the ways you can solve a portion. Again, you cross multiply. So remember, you use equivalent fractions, you can use unit rate, or you can cross multiply to solve a proportion. Again, we cross multiply, 10X equal 480. It's still the same exact thing. Divide both sides by 10, we get X equal 48. So that missing side is 48. Now, what they can also do is if that's a right triangle, they might say these sides are similar. They might ask you for the missing side. They might ask you for the area. They might ask you for the perimeter. But if they tell you they're similar, mm -hmm. you use a proportion to find that um, uh, unknown value. Got me? Gotcha. Now you know. <laughs> if okay. you know, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love rap music. Got to excuse me. Okay. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> Anyway, um, any other questions? That, that was actually a good question. Um, I haven't seen too many of those. If anybody who has taken the GED, I haven't seen too many uh, similar triangles, but what we do know is they're gonna have proportions on there. They're gonna have proportions on there. Um, matter of fact, um, I got a, 
um, somebody, somebody sent me a question. Let me see which one it is. Hold on for one second. Let me move this over here for a second. I got so much stuff open on my computer. It's ridiculous. This, this is really a shame. I've been tutoring all weekend, all weekend, all weekend. I'm sorry. Hold That's on. how you know you're a true teacher. If your desktop isn't full, <laughs> then, then we then we should be worried. <laughs> Mine is definitely full. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a nice good one. So, and again, remember I told you proportions are a, a listen. You could probably be expect um four to five problems that have to do with ratio and proportion. You definitely have to be ready for ratio and proportion. So make sure that's an area you cover. Again, four to five because remember. Uh, constant proportionality, um, slope, they all considered um, proportional. But but this one really, let me see if I can find it in my email. This one really, I really like this question. Um, let me see if I can find it. Hopefully I can find it fairly quickly. It was actually really good. I love, it was like a question. Um, oh, come on, please let me find it quickly. I hope I can't know that's an inequality. Mm -mm -mm. That's not it right there. That's not it. Let me try this one here. So right now, if anybody can think of another question while I'm looking for this one, and that way I can have it in mind. Let me see where are probability. Oh, you definitely oh here it is. Be here into it. it. Is. Here it is. Look at this question here. Look, at, somebody sent this to me in the email, right? Um, and they're having a problem. I thought this is a very good question. Um, um, now it looks like it came from an actual. Uh, I don't know, but let's look at. It. Is this the one? Yeah, right, right, right. So it says, um, an artist wants to paint a canvas. Let me make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. This was actually a good problem. I thought. Um, and I got this a while ago. I got this maybe uh, maybe like two, three weeks ago. So what I did was I recorded the video for this person because her work schedule was so hectic that we couldn't even meet. So what I would do for her is when she had a question, I would just record a short video and send it to her. <laughs> anyway, anyway, an artist wants to paint a canvas based on a photograph that measures four inches by five inches. Based on the canvas prices listed in the table, the artist can use canvases at which prices to make a painting that is proportional to the photograph. Wow. Does anyone know how they would solve this problem? Let's see if someone can give me how they would solve this problem. Or Because when I read this, if I'm a student, I'm like, what are they talking about? What you're taking the, uh, the four four times five is 20 inches so we know that's the area right nope 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 mm -mm, oh nope. not at all it has nothing to do with area this so what's the key word in this paragraph so remember identify what's given what do you think that's in this paragraph that should help you so tell me that first let's start with remember one of the things i always tell you start with what they give you and also what they want to know so what are they giving you in this question the prices of the canvases. They give you the price of the canvases, okay. And they also give you the dimensions. So they give you that in the tape, right? Okay, so we got that. What else are they giving us? The price. Right, we got the price. That's what the else price. are they giving us? Um, scroll up a little bit, Mr. Mr. How much the photograph measures four inches by five inches? Right, so that's the dimension. So if you look at that first column, I circled that already. They're giving us the dimensions and they're giving a the canvas price. So we had that. So that we already had. But what else are they giving us in this paragraph that's important? It's two things. In order for you to do this problem, you must identify these two things. If you can't, if you don't can't, if you if you can't identify these two things, you're, you're going to have a problem with this uh, 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 question. Can you canvases at which prices? Proportional. Right. That's what they want to know. Okay, but what else? Proportional. Four inches by five. Proportional. Explain it. And one oh more thing. Oh my God. Okay. And one more thing. 
four to five inches. Right, right. Four, to, four by five inches. So the four I thought I said that. Inches, oh, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't hear you. So those are the things you must know right there. In order for you to start this problem, you must know that the photograph measures four by five inches. You must know they want something proportional. Well, proportional means you're multiplying the top and bottom by the same number. That's how you find something proportional. So, for example, if you go to CVS, well, maybe I'm showing my age. Maybe they don't do it anymore. But if you want to blow up a picture to a poster, right, sometimes what happened was if, if you tried to stretch it, you know, <laughs> with your phone, right or left, it would be too skinny or too fat, right? You had to hold shift in order to move it to resize it proportionally. So watch this, let's do it. So four by five inches. So four by five, right? Remember, I always said you can, you can use a ratio. You can think of a ratio using the word two. So you can say four to five. You can look at it as four colon five, or you can look at it as four over five. Those are the three ways. Now, in order to do computations, you gotta think of it as a fraction. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay, so four to five is our photograph. Well, we want to see if it's proportional to the first canvas, which is eight by 10. Is there a number that we can multiply four fifths by to get eight tenths? Yes. Is, is there something? Is it two? two? Yeah. So, Whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom, right? So four times two is eight, five times two is 10. So that means eight by 10 is proportional to four by five. Everybody understand that? Yes. Now we're gonna go to the next uh, uh, canvas. Four to five, is that equal to 16 by 20? What do we have to multiply four by to get 16? Four. Four. Whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom. Well, five times four is 20, correct? So mm -hmm. 16 by 20 is proportional. So now we're going to go to the third canvas. Four by five, is that equal to 18 by 24? Is there any number that we can multiply four by to get 18? No. No. There is no number. Now, you could cross multiply to also get this, but we don't use equivalent fractions. There is no number that I can multiply four by to get 18. Mm -mm. Okay, so we can't use equivalent fractions. So another way we can see if something proportional is if we cross multiply. For example, this is what I mean. Watch this. I'm going to show you another way. Four fifths is equal to eight tenths. We already know this is proportional. Watch this. What's four times 10? 40. 40. What's eight times five? 40. 40. They're proportional. Let's look at this one. Four fifths, 16 over 20. What's four times 20? Yeah. 20. What's four times 20? Oh, four times 20. 80. 80. And what's six times 15? Mm. I mean, five times 16. I don't know why I said that. Five times 16. 80. 80. So they're proportional. So even though we couldn't use equivalent fractions here, we could cross multiply. So we get 50 times 40. Or 4 times 24, which is 96. So we get 50 and 40, that's 90. Well, 90 is not equal to 96. So we know 18 by 24 is not proportional. Right. The last one, four by five, is that equal to 24 by 36? What do you have to multiply four by to get 24? Six. Six, whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom. Five times six is what? 30. 30, so that's not proportional. So there's only two dimensions, two canvas sizes that are proportional to four by five. That's eight by 10 <laughs> and 16 by 20. But they're not asking you to canvas sizes, they're asking you to what? The prices. The prices. The prices. So what are the two prices? 1165 and 643. So that would be the answer. You have to click on both of those. That is a lovely question. 
Um, but oh, again, wow. you got to identify the key word that's in that paragraph is proportional. You have to be familiar with ratio and proportions. I guarantee you, it's about you have to, you, they got scale problems that you have to use proportions on. You're going to have at least four questions that have to deal with ratio and proportions. You must be ready for that area. So if you don't, where can you go to practice with ratio and proportions? Ebook. You the ebook, but where else can you go to practice? Schoolology. School, 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 it's right there. <laughs> so I help prepare you with a lot of questions that you might expect on the test um, in Schoology. So that was actually a very good problem. So anybody else have any questions they want to go over? Man, Mr. Tinsley, man, I'm just like low key. Like I, I bought the ebook, and now I'm at the point where I'm, as y'all going, I'm just writing down the things that I know that I'm going to have issues with now. Like this is like, just the math part is the only thing, only part that I got to take. So, okay, um, it's really no, it's kind of redundant for me to ask where to even start. I guess I just need to just continue to just go and just flow with you guys and just take the uh the practice test situation that that uh. Oh wonderful yeah, by the way, question. I signed I signed up for one, schoology and stuff like one, that. One, wonderful question. But it's like but it's you like do, yes, I'm sir. gonna tell you all the steps you should take. I'm gonna tell you the steps and anybody can use these same steps. The all first right. thing, if you haven't taken the actual math exam, take the G D ready practice test. Okay. That's first. Why? Okay. Because it's gonna give you a prescription of everything you need to work on. Okay. Once okay, you whatever. know what, you, so that way, because that's the problem. People think they got to start from uh, uh, ground zero, from the genesis right. of math. And you won't even have to. You don't even yeah. have to. So you use the GD math ready test to yeah. give you a prescription of what you need to work on. Right. Now in school, G, I got a pretest for each section. So if you wanted to start from the beginning, you can. You can start right with whole numbers. Take a pretest. They go to decimals, then fractions, then mm. ratio and proportions. I got a pretest. So if you score eighty above, move mm. to the next section. Keep it moving. Because mm. mm. I'm like this, man. I want right? to get the thing. I, I want to get the things. I want to get the things that I know is going to be an issue for me. You know what I'm saying? So it's well, like that's that's what you do that's first. You take that practice test. Right, 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 man. Okay, Take say okay. Practice. So all right, well, I got all right. Well, I got my book. All right. And now, so, now remember, I um I sent a a, a discount code in the email. So yeah, I got to use that. You know, for, and I use that for show, for show. You know, yeah, I'm just like but man. I'm, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the the discount code for the GED practice test. Oh, okay, okay. They give you fifty okay, percent off. Did it? Did anybody know know by hand? It's either fifty off or all fifty. 50. Off. This, uh huh. It's what 50 is it? off. 50 50 off. Off. So use so it says if you want to apply a discount, put 50 off. It's gonna take 50% off your GED ready for test. Okay. So now okay. it'll cost you three dollars. That's perfect, man. Because man, I gotta get this thing, man. It's all my grandma won't, man. She's like, Listen, if it's your last test, <laughs> it's, if my it's, last your last test it's my you last one. It's my last one. You in the right man. place. Don't worry, you're gonna pass. I already Don't know. Worry. I already know. My teacher, my teacher sent me to you, actually. Wow, really? <laughs> Yeah, my teacher, Mr. Broadwater, man, because I was like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a millennial, man. So sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm like, all right, let me try it again, but then I get I get I'm motivated. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But man, I had asked Mr. Broadwater. I said, Mr. I was following y'all on YouTube, man, Mr. Tindy. So I was I was I was I was doing all the quadratic equations. I was just following you on YouTube, you know, just doing that. And I'm like, man, I gotta I gotta catch him. So this is me making an attempt to blend myself in to, you know, the community that in the classroom that you already have and just you know i'm, I'm gonna definitely do that and take that gd um learn that calculator that's the major thank important you darlene thank that you that earl all right so all right, let's find out what's the next question what's the next concept somebody so, may be having problems with probability probability i love it i love oh. Probability, <laughs> but you may only get you may only get one to two questions on probability. So yeah. my thing is, I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time on probability because you may only get one. But let's do it. Let me open the study guide real quick. Okay. So what is? Can somebody tell me what probability is? Can somebody tell me what probability is? 
is it isn't it like the possible outcome of something like a coin flip or a like dice is like two to three uh, ratio right sort of yes kind of? You, you can yes it, remember that's why it? math is all related so that's, that's why i go with fractions then i go to racial proportions and then i go to probability because basically it's a fraction and i'm gonna show you how to do it let me it's find a problem. so so what i'll do is i'll go i'll go to a blank page and i'll make something up so first of all understand what probability is probability is the chance of something happening so let me write that down that's all it is the chance of something happening. That's gonna be on the science test too, right, Mr. Tinsley? Yeah, most definitely, yes. It's definitely gonna be in your science, definitely gonna be in your math, definitely. The chance of something happening, right? So, well, how do you, Mr. Tim, what do you mean? I'm gonna make it simple for you. Probability, <laughs> probability is the selected outcome Over total outcome. What? Selected outcome, total outcome. Mr. Tilly, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. You don't worry. I'm about to show you. Watch this. Everybody familiar. So, first of all, I think Amani says she 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 mentioned a coin. She mentioned what did you else did you mention? Did you say a coin? Dice. What else did you say? Dice. Dice. So, for example, let's do let's do the most common. Let's do uh, a, 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 a coin and dice, and then I'm just gonna make something up. So the probability. <laughs> of flipping a tails, getting a tails if you flip a coin. So the selected outcome is this. Hold on, let me get the red pen. This is the selected outcome. So how many ways can you get tails? One. On coin? One. One. How many total outcomes can you get on a coin? Two. So the probability of you flipping tails is one half, 0.5, or 50%. You have to know the <coughs> fraction decimal percent equivalent, right? That's it. All right, so what about what about dice, Mr. Timmy? Let's, what about dice or a big what, old what jar full of M&Ms? I, 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 Same I, I, thing. Don't worry. I'm about to show you. Don't worry. First of all, I need you to understand the foundational part. So let's go to a dice. So the probability of me rolling a an seven. even number right. on a pair of dice. So remember, this is the selected outcome. How many even numbers on a dice? Four. Three. Three. Oh, I four. thought it was four. Two, eight, four. Wait, two, four, four six, eight. eight. No, four. on a dice. A dice is one through dice. six. Three. Yeah. I don't, you must be playing Yahtzee or something. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I'm trying to. No, I'm so trying there's to do two, five, four, four right, okay. six. Right? We What's the total outcome? One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. So mm -hmm. three out of six, which is one half, 0.5, or 50%. Okay. So that's that. Those are the little basics. All right. Let's get a little. Let's get a bit. Let's get more. A little bit deep into probability. Okay. Let's. What's the probability of me rolling a three or a a, a, a three or a six? So a three or a six on a pair of dice. The selected outcomes is three out of six, three or six, which is two. What's the total outcomes? Two or six. Same. Two or six, which is one third, 0.33 or 33%. Okay, Mr. Tennessee, okay, okay. okay. Okay, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get a little bit, of, let's get a little bit more difficult. What's, what's the probability of getting a king or a queen from a Ooh. deck of cards. Wow. Oh, stop um, Four out of 52? Is there's four kings in a deck. But how many queens are there? Eight. Four. So eight there's eight also four. four. It's so eight out of 52. Eight out of 52. Now, we can reduce that or watch this. Again, let your calculator do the work. So let me clear for a second. Let me bring my calculator up. And this is what I'm saying. You don't have to make mistakes. You let the calculator do all the work for you. Let the calculator do the hefty, heavy lifting. So watch this. So again, there's four kings, there's four queens. So a total together for me to get a king or a queen, that's eight. How many total cards are there? 52. Eight out of 52? Well, I gotta, I gotta reduce that. Why? Just hit enter on your calculator. Two out of 13. 
That's the fraction. Okay, well, I'm going to change that to a decimal. 0.153. I want to change that to a percent. 15.15%, 15.4%, or 15.3, depending upon how they want you to round off. But again, let the calculator do the hard work. Okay, so we got the, hold on, Mr. Tinsley, but that's not what the question they're going to ask you, right? Because when, when you're doing, when you're in class, they're saying there's six marbles, six white, eight black, and you're sitting there like, what? Right. So you just survive. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so well, I'm going to open up schools you real quick because I don't feel like typing out a long question. I've already got some, so let's use some I've already created. Sound like a good idea? Yeah. Sound like a great idea. Hold on, let me find some 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 probability. So I'm gonna show you the difference. Now that's called simple probability. Okay. We didn't get the compound probability yet. So simple probability is the chance of one event happening. That's what I need you to remember. That's one event. So picking the king or queen. That's one event. One card. Uh, uh, flipping the tails on the head. That's one event. All right, so let me go into here. Let me get, uh, what did I say? Uh, probability, probability, there we go. Let me go here again. I'm using Schoology. And that's all, you, everything you need is right here. Boom. <clears throat> well, it would be nice if you could see the screen, huh? Let me put it on the screen. So I'm in Schoology. Now, so let me start all over where I went. So I came into the course. I need to practice. Okay, if you need notes, you go into math lessons. Okay, I'm going to practice. I think I know what I think I got it pretty good. I still, I'm going to come down. I'm looking for probability. Where are you? Probability. I don't see you. I know I got probability. Passed it. You passed huh? it. You I passed, passed it. it. Here we go. Probability. Okay, let's find some questions. Oops, don't need to see all that. Let's see a question. Is this website free? This website is free. Yeah, stop playing. Really? Who said that? What do you mean, really? <laughs> Who said that? You must. This is my second know. time in your class. I haven't mm. asked any questions. That I just, I just, I don't want to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, you, no, 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 no. That's what we hear. We interrupt. She said, "Is this free?" So, but I meant what? I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like, yes, it's free. I <laughs> made it for you to pass this math exam. Of course, it's free. Of course, you're nothing. And CK12. So, awesome. Let's see, let's see if we can go one right here. This I heard someone mention a question like this. So let me make it nice and big. What is the probability of choosing a green mark from a jar containing five red, six right, green, see, and four? See, blue? I, I knew it was going to pop up. I do want to question. I do it. I got you. Don't Six you out of 15. Listen, what I'm going to tell you is this. You going to be glad you saw that ad. You are going to be glad your teacher said something. You are going to be glad you went to that YouTube channel cuz I'm telling you. Listen, I got you. Listen. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. So, let's go. remember, probability of a green. Six. Okay? So remember, selected over total. Selected outcomes over total outcomes. So if I want green, what's my selected outcome? Six. Six, because there's six green. How many total marbles are there? Fifteen. Fifteen. So if we reduce that to lowest terms, uh, three goes into six two times. Three goes into 15 five times. So the answer could be two-fifths. It could be 0.4. It could be 40%. So if there's a 40% change. Is that fast? <clears throat> so hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you say? That, that, that was fast. That was it. That, that, like, that was like, that, that was a short cut. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to give you the fastest, most efficient way to be able to pass this exam. You don't have to sit in class for five months, six months, going through fractions, decimal, fractions, all that stuff that you're doing. I right. got you. Come to class, I, buy the ebook, log, get your Schoology account ready. I got you. I have right. been let's in go, a GED let's, let's, math class, another math class for two years. And then yes. one of the students passed me your information. And needless to say, I'm here. Wow. I'm, listen, and, and, and these not paid advertisements. <laughs> Straight up. YouTube, I, saw it, on YouTube and I, so again, I saw it on YouTube and I jumped right on. Me too. Me too, because I was stuck. <laughs> Because so, what I want you to do is, 
I want you to understand, see the problem with math for so many is because it caused so much frustration in the past. So once somebody can make it much easier for you to understand this, then you got like a little bit of hope and you're like, wow, that's not really that hard. I think I can figure that out. And that's what I, that's, that was my hope. I had a student and I helped her pass the exam. Matter of fact, I put her, if you look at my post on Facebook, that was my first graduation person. I put her first because she's the one that inspired me to do it. She said, Mr. Tinsley, you help us so many, everybody is passing GD in your class. You helping more people than anybody I know. Like the city of Philadelphia literally had 181 graduates, right? 35 were from my two classes in the city of Philadelphia. She said, Mr. Tinsley, you helping a lot of people, but you could be helping thousands. She said, you need to bring this to the world. And I said, in two weeks, I created a book, created my website. That's how we got here. Honest to God truth. That's how we started. I'm glad you did. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Watch this. All right, so we did, we did the uh, Jack of Queen. Let's do one. Oh, I love this one right here. Now, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. A hard one. And I'm going to show you that it's not that hard. <laughs> This, can, this, is, this is probably one of the most difficult problems you'll see on the GED exam about probability. And it's a little different. It's called compound probability. Oh compound. my God, Mr. Hold on, Mr. Tensey. Oh my God. You, you, didn't, you didn't just gave us this simple probability. Now you're talking about compound probability. But guess what? All you're doing is finding the simple probability of each event, and then you're multiplying them together. Gotcha. Two and a half. That's it. So you find a simple probability of each event, then you're multiplying together. So watch this. A jar contains 12 caramels, seven mints, and six dark chocolates. You can tell I used to love chocolate, right? <laughs> what is the probability of selecting a dark chocolate, then a caramel without replacing? Oh my God, Mr. Tinsley. Oh, I don't need not to start now. <laughs> Watch this, I'm gonna walk you through it. What are the two events? What two things are you doing? Chocolate and caramel. Come on. Mm-hmm. All right, so you're selecting a dark chocolate first, and then you're selecting a caramel. But the important thing is saying without replacing. That means you're picking that dark, you're picking that dark chocolate and you're not putting it back in the box. You've eaten it, it's gone. Right, so now the probability of selecting a dark chocolate is what? Six to 25. Six is the selected outcomes, because that's what we're looking for, six dark chocolates. Where'd you get 25 from? How'd you get that number? Oh, because I add, it's, it's together with every, every, all the other candies, right? Right, so you found the total of all the, all the, uh, uh, the chocolates, caramel, yeah. I mean, all the candy, whatever it's called, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever it is. 12 caramels, seven mints, six dark chocolates. So you add all them together, you got 25. We can't reduce that anymore. Six over 25 is lowest terms, right? So that's the probability of the dark chocolate. Now, that's the simple probability of picking a dark chocolate. Now we want to find the simple probability of picking a caramel. So the selected outcomes are what? 12. 12. 12. 12. Now, um, how many total? What's the new total? 13. 25, yeah, 13. 24. 25 minus 6. What, what did you say, Earl? 24. 24. This was as important. Remember, we started with 25. We took that dark chocolate out. We ate it. We no longer have 25 total. How many do we have? 24. I thought we ate the 6. We took... Eight, I thought, no, 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 no. The probability of picking a dark chocolate... We didn't say all six dark chocolates. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Only one. So we reduced that to lowest terms, which is one half. And then we multiply the two simple probabilities together. Six over 25 times one over two. Two going to two one time. Two going to six three times. We get three over 25 which is 0.12 or 12%. So the chance of you going in, picking a dark chocolate, not putting it back in, and then 
putting your head in again and getting a caramel is only a 12% chance. But yeah, the important thing I need you to remember is you find the simple probability of picking that dark chocolate first, which was six out of 25. Then you find a simple probability of selecting the caramel. But the important thing you have to remember or, or you have to understand is it says without replacement. Right. That means that chocolate wasn't put back in. So it's 12 out of 24. I got confused. I thought it was six. They took mm -hmm. six out, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Only one. So how so how come he so dark chocolate, a caramel, yeah. a right, a caramel, a dark chocolate. And so, somebody asked the question. So how come it was twenty four instead of twenty five again? Because basically, so, so you, you, so, you you added up all of the candies first to get the first probability twenty five, mm -hmm. right? So you stuck your hand in it. You stuck your hand in the in the box. You took a dark chocolate out. You didn't put it back. How many uh, candies are left in the box? How is the probability of selecting a dark chocolate and then selecting a caramel? Ah, okay. So basically, it's like for the first probability for selecting a dark chocolate, taking one of them out, and then, you know, 12 plus 7 plus 6, and that gave me the probability of that. And then for the caramel, I just took one. I just basically it was 11 plus 7 plus. Uh, no, no, no. Not 11. Not 11. You still you got 12 take no caramels. Problem. You didn't take no caramel. Oh. You just took one chocolate. Oh, okay. 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 I see what's going on. Okay. 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 Now, again, I would probably use my calculator for this problem. I probably wouldn't even, you know, uh, but, but, but understanding, having, having, un, having a conceptual understanding of probability is important. They're only going to give you two questions, either simple, a simple probability or a compound probability. That's it. They either gonna give you one simple, one compound, or in some cases they may give you a simple and a compound. But the most you're gonna have is two probability problems. That's the most. So we're not we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time, but let me go over another question. Let's see. Mm, look at number 10. Stop playing. Look at number 10 about the mm. um, I might be showing my age, right? But this is what I used to say to my class. I'd be like, years ago they used to have this commercial. Say this is your brain on drugs, and they put they used to take a fried uh, egg and put it in my frying yeah. pan. So in my class, I was like, "This is your brain on Mr. T." <laughs> Listen, this is what I need you to understand. Math can be very frustrating. It can be hard. It can make you upset. It can put you in a place you don't like. What I want you to do is always take a deep breath. What do I know? So if they ask you probability, you should be thinking. The chance of something happening. Probability, selected outcomes over total outcome. So every time you do a probability question, I want you to go through those steps. So when you get to your test, you know, you're not even going to sweat it. Watch this, number 10. Let's try number 10. Let me get my pen back. Let me get red. You have a jar of marbles in front of you with the following flavors. Well, that's kind of a, a, a red flavor. Sh shouldn't it be cherry? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, Anyway, that's me. So six are red, 12 Raspberry, are blue, lemon. Uh, six are yellow, nine are white. What is the probability of selecting the marble that is not red, replacing it? Means I'm going to put it back. Then I'm going to select a marble that is white. So the first so, uh, simple probability is what? Six over 33. Mm -mm. But what, what's the words I'm looking for? Not red, right? Right. So, so how many? Up, so oh, whole, slow, red. slow, slow, slow. Not red. How many are not red? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. How did you get twenty-seven? I added twelve, six, and nine. Twelve, six, and nine. Does everybody understand why um, Brandy said twenty-seven for the selected outcomes that are not red? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So. 12 plus 9 is 21, plus 6 is 27. Over total outcomes, how many total marbles are there? Marbles are there? 32 plus 33. 6. Okay. So you should see right away they're both divisible by 3. So what we're going to do is, now if you put this in your calculator, it would automatically make it uh, uh, reduce it to lowest terms. How many times does 3 go into 27? 
Nine. And how many times is three going to 33? 11. So your probability to pick a, 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 a marble, how can a marble have flavor? That'll break your teeth. A marble? <laughs> anyway, anyway, there's a nine out of 11 probability that you're going to select a marble that is not red. Everybody understand that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we pick that red as a nine out of 11. What's the next probability we got to figure out? The white. White. So the selected outcomes, well, how many white are there is what? Nine. Nine. And what's the total? 33. 33. So again, divisible by three. How many times does three go into nine? Three. Great. And how many times does three go into 33? 11. 11. So we have the simple probability of selecting one that's not red. We have the simple probability of selecting one that's white. What are we going to do to those two once we find the simple probability of each, what are we going to do to them? Multiply. Multiply. So nine elevens times three elevens. What's nine times three? Twenty-seven. <clears throat> and what is eleven times eleven? Uh, I think one hundred twenty-one. One hundred twenty-one. Oh my God, Mister Tensey, what what is that? That means you have a probability. The probability you picking a a marble that's not red, and then putting your hand in again and grabbing a white is only 27 out of 121. But what did I say? You should know the fraction decimal percent equivalent. So how do I change 27 out of 21 to a decimal? Divide. Divide. Okay. Let's let me let me grab my calculator. Let me clear the screen and bring my calculator because listen, I don't want to I don't want to divide uh 27 by 121. I might be here all day. All right. So we're going to grab our calculator. The easiest way to put a fraction in with this calculator is to press what? N D. N D. 27 over 121. Right? So that's how we put it in, right? To change to a decimal, the easiest way to change to a decimal, right, is it this double arrows right here, your toggle button right above enter. Bam. So the decimal is 0.223. How do we change that decimal to a percent? Put, move it twice right to, the right. Mean the decimal twice over. to the right. Yeah. One, two. So 22.3%. Mm. Now, to ask you, the nearest whole percent, it will be 22%, which most likely they will. So the chance of you picking <laughs> a marble that's not red, putting it back in, and then selecting a marble as white is only 22%. You have to be ready for them to give the answer in a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. You have to be ready for all three. That's the hardest probability questions you're going to get. Now, let's go to the study guide. Let's try one more. Let's try one more in the study guide. Let me clear this out. Let's go to the study guide and look at a problem that the GED may give you. GED study guide. Where are you? There you go. Um, and listen, I, in my class, um, I gave this question and nobody got it right. When I first, and this was, you know, like two years ago, but nobody got this one right. Let's look at it. Let's see if we can figure this out. In a shipment of toys from a manufacturer, the probability that a toy is defective is one out of 50. If Mary selects two toys from a shipment, what is the probability that both toys are defective? Is this a simple probability problem or a compound probability problem? Compound. How do you know it's compound? Because they're asking us to do two things or two toys. And right, you're going to so right away to select two toys. You know it's compound probability. When we know it's compound probability, we know we're multiplying, right? So what is the a probability of selecting a defective toy? Two out of 50? No, or two out of 100? One over 50. You, cut, cut. Listen, identify what's given. You don't have to guess. They tell you. What is the probability of choosing a toy that is defective? 
One out of 50. One out of 50. The second toy, what's the probability of choosing a toy that's defective? One out of 25. Why you say 25? What happened to you? Just you just took 25. Why you say 25? Because it was two toys and it's only 50 toys. I, um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's I guess. go get exactly what's given. They say they gave you the probability of picking a defective toy is one out of 50. So this is the probability when you pick, select your first toy is one out of 50. When you select your second toy, it's still what? What's the probability of picking a bad toy? Out of 50. One out of 50. One out of 50. We're going to multiply them together. One over, tw one over 2,500. Nice, easy problem. Mm. Mm. This problem most people get wrong. Identify if it's simple or, or mm. compound first. If it's one event, it's simple. If it's more than one event, it's compound. You know you multiply it. Find the simple probabilities of each event. In this question, it's not hard. They gave us the probability. They gave, they told you. Look at this. Remember, I told you identify was given. They gave it to us already. They already gave us the probability. One over 50. So the probability of picking the first toy, one out of 50. What's the probability of picking the second toy? One out of 50. So what's the probability of having two toys that's defective? That's compound probability. We're going to multiply. It's one out of 2,500. There you are go. There any, are there any other probabilities? Like simple probability, okay. common probability. Okay, oh, pause right there. Pause right there. Pause, 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 pause. <laughs> These, listen, everything that I go over is specifically for the GED. These are the only two probabilities you need for the GED. Simple and compound. Don't worry about experimental, uh, statistical, don't worry about all those different probabilities you see in all your books and they teach in class. The only two you need is simple and compound. Yeah, yeah, okay. Gotcha. I like that. I'm not going to give you anything extraneous. I'm not giving you anything you don't need. Everything I in my ebook, everything on Schoology, everything I do in this class is specifically geared for the high school equivalency exam. Okay. Now, okay. In, in real math, Thank you. Because there's a whole bunch of I different need. probabilities. There's a whole bunch of different probabilities. <laughs> All we need for the GD is simple <laughs> and compound. That's it. Well, that's, yeah, Khan Academy. How you how you write for exactly? Everybody. And we go. You you was confused, weren't you? And it, it, it get, you got so frustrated, and you thought you understood it, and then they threw something else. And he was like, "Oh my God, I don't know how to do this." I simple. was. I know. I already know. This is why I made Schoology specifically to pass the high school equivalent exam. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm not saying, man. Listen, man, like, uh, but, but but I got it. Ooh, I ain't never mind. We gonna keep on going because we are gonna keep on going. Man, we, I, I have going. so much to say, keep but going. yes, we're gonna keep, keep going. it going. Yes, keep going. yes. yes. Like, listen, man, don't listen. Don't question, worry. Man. Listen, okay. listen. Um, I've been doing this since 2015. 2015. A young lady uh, did not pass not too long ago. Um, but she's going to be taking this soon. In seven years, she is the only person that has not passed the exam. Once she passes her exam, I'm back at 100%. Not 89, not 91. Not, I'm telling you, every single person that puts that time in and I help, pass the exam. Man, Witness yes, sir. Point blank, that. period. I can testify. And I'm telling you, it's probably nobody in America that probably can see that. Nobody in America. I'm telling you, there's probably nobody. PhDs, eight degrees. Nah, ain't no, not too many people can see that. Tell me. I, I was even in a class with a teacher. He wouldn't even teach us how to use the calculator. That's why I got out of that class when I saw Mr. Tinsley on, on YouTube. Yes. Directly to him. <laughs> and, and so, 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 uh, for like about a year. And then exactly. if you teach somebody who don't know no math to pass the test, that's yes. the real thing. Okay, never, so so so, so so uh, and I'm gonna give you this is the this is this is this is the second person that helped me, right? This is the second person 
that helped me, right? A young man was in my class. I'm gonna I'm 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 take this off for a second. Let me pause. I'm gonna pause.